From 1914 to 1916, intelligence indicated that German U-boats patrolling near Great Britain significantly surpassed the existing H, K, L, and N United States Navy submarine classes in capability. Should Great Britain succumb, these submarines would not be able to traverse the Atlantic or engage effectively upon arrival, influencing the development of the S-class submarines. The Navy required these submarines to be 800 tons, have a speed of 11 to 14 knots, and a range of 3,400 to 5,400 nautical miles, equipped with four 21-inch torpedo tubes and a 4-inch deck gun. Traditional builders, electric boat and lake, were approached for designs, but for the first time, the Navy also created its own design to be constructed at Navy Yards, aiming to inject competition into the procurement process. Although initially viewed as prototypes, the designs from Electric Boat and the Bureau of Construction and Repair BUCNR, were always meant for mass production. The Electric Boat design, which led to Group 1 and 4 submarines, represented an evolution of previous models, featuring a single hull with internal ballast tanks, a rounded spindle-shaped hull, and a rear-positioned rudder. Group 1S boats, compared to former R boats, were substantially larger in length, beam, draft, and displacement, allowing for enhanced range, bigger engines, faster speeds, and increased torpedo storage. The Lake S2 design featured a double hull with ballast tanks surrounding the inner hull and a flat-ended stern for added buoyancy, with the rudder installed underneath. Although the superstructure was designed to increase surface buoyancy, the bow's tendency to dive into waves led Lake to install a front buoyancy tank, resulting in a distinctive humped appearance. However, this design compromised maneuverability and reliability, leading to its unpopularity among crews and its rejection by the Navy for further production. The BUC and RS-3 design was a fully double-hulled model that integrated elements from both electric boat and lake designs. It stretched 231 feet in length, making it slightly larger than its counterparts. Its battery was housed in a single large compartment situated ahead of the control room, contributing to a long streamlined profile. The hull terminated sharply at a vertical chisel shape at the stern, where the rudder and stern dive planes were located ventrally, just aft of the propellers. In Group 2, four boats and all Group 4 boats featured an extra stern torpedo tube. The boats in Group 4 were longer and had a shallower draft. Electric boats' designs, Groups 1 and 3, employed single hulls, whereas the remaining groups used double hulls. All S-boats were equipped with a 4-inch or 102mm 50 caliber deck gun, an upgrade from the 3-inch guns on earlier submarines. This change reflected the frequent use of deck guns by German U-boats, many of which mounted 105mm or 4.1-inch guns. Another enhancement was in the Conning Tower's Fairwater, enlarged based on experiences from North Atlantic patrols during the First World War, which indicated the need for better protection for bridge watch standards. Insights from examining captured U-boats post-armistice led to S-boats being constructed or retrofitted with a larger Fairwater featuring permanent grab rails for better surface operation in the North Atlantic. Future Admiral Hyman G. Rickover served on the USS S-48, and attributed his drive for high engineering standards to his experience with the faulty, sooty, dangerous, and repellent engineering of the S-Class submarines. In 1923, the USS S-1 tested a floatplane concept, later adopted by the Japanese. A cylindrical hangar was installed on the aft deck to accommodate a single Martin MS-1 floatplane. However, the tests deemed the idea impractical, and the equipment was removed. The hangar was later repurposed and reconstructed as the prototype for the McCann Rescue Chamber, a diving bell designed to rescue crew from submerged submarines. The first two submarines completed by electric boat were the S-1 at Quincy and the S-30 at San Francisco. During their builders' sea trials, both experienced severe torsional vibrations in the drivetrain at high speeds, damaging both engines on each submarine. Further investigations revealed that the crankshafts of the Nelseco 8 EB-15 engines, produced by a subsidiary of Electric Boat, were too narrow and lacked the necessary rigidity to withstand the force of each firing cylinder, causing excessive torsional twisting. This significant flaw disrupted the production schedule at Electric Boat. Some submarines remained unfinished at the yards, while others operated at diminished power until a solution was found. 
the Navy Department eventually secured extra funds for electric boat to replace the engines with crankshafts of a greater diameter, rectifying the vibration issue but significantly delaying delivery, with average construction time surpassing four and a half years. Once resolved, the electric boat submarines provided exemplary service, with many operating until the end of the Second World War. Submarines constructed to the BUCNR design at Portsmouth and Lake were powered either by a bureau-built manned diesel engine or in Lake's case a two-cycle or four-cycle Bush Sulzer engine. Although these engines also faced the typical challenges of early diesel technology, they proved much more reliable than the Nelseco engines and delivered satisfactory performance throughout their operational life. When the United States entered the Second World War in December 1941, the S-Class submarines were between 16 and 21 years old. Although the United States Navy operated older O&R classes, commissioned in 1918 and 1919 respectively, the S-Class represented the oldest class of submarines still engaged in combat operations, potentially the oldest globally. At the war's outset, 37 S-Class submarines were active, with 20 earning battle stars. 17 of these managed to sink a total of 42 Japanese vessels. The war claimed six S-boats, five lost to accidents, three from grounding, one from a collision, and one from flooding, and one, the S-44, lost in combat. Several S-class submarines were assigned to Allied navies, five, S-1, S-21, S-22, S-24, and S-29, were transferred to the Royal Navy between March and September 1942 and the S-25 was handed over to Poland in November 1941. These submarines primarily served in anti-submarine warfare training and were decommissioned by mid-1944. S-boats were deployed in both the Atlantic and Pacific during World War II. Despite their size and speed limitations compared to newer fleet submarines and lacking the range for extended Pacific patrols, these 20-year-old vessels were utilized for reconnaissance, supply missions, and coastal defense. Eight S-boats from S-11 through S-17 and S-48 spent the entire war in the Atlantic, operating from Coco Solo in Panama to Casco Bay in Maine. In the aftermath of the Battle of the Aleutian Islands, some S-boats operated from Dutch Harbor in Alaska, while others served out of Australia in the Southwest Pacific area. By late 1943, as more advanced Gato-class fleet submarines entered service, most S-boats were relegated to anti-submarine warfare or ASW training roles. However, two S-boats, S-42 and S-47, conducted combat patrols into 1944, with S-42's last patrol running from August 5th to September 3rd, 1944. During the Second World War, S-class submarines did not employ the newer Mark 14 torpedo, which was standard in fleet submarines because their torpedo tubes were shorter. Instead, they used the older Mark 10 torpedo from the First World War. Many fleet submarines also resorted to using the Mark 10 due to production shortages. Additionally, since the Mark 14 torpedoes experienced a high failure rate early in the war, using the Mark 10 was not necessarily a drawback. One of the most significant combat achievements for the S-Class was accomplished by USS S-44, SS-155. Following the severe United States Navy and Royal Australian Navy loss at the Battle of Sabo Island, S-44 encountered the retreating Japanese force near Kavieng on the morning of August 10, 1942. Positioned ideally, S-44's crew fired four Mark 10 torpedoes, hitting the heavy cruiser Keiko with three of them. The severely damaged Keiko sank within seven minutes, allowing S-44 to make a successful escape. As the war progressed and newer submarines were commissioned, S-class boats were phased out of combat and reassigned to training roles. By late 1944, 11 S-boats had been decommissioned and allocated for experimental uses, including being targets for new weapons. At the time of Japan's surrender on September 2, 1945, 13 S-boats were still active. By October 1945, 11 of these had been decommissioned, with another following in November, and the S-15 staying in service until June 1946. Additionally, 11 S-boats were decommissioned in 1944 and 1945, prior to Japan's surrender, and were generally used as practice targets. Notably, the wreck of USS S-35 used as a target boat 
was discovered off Oahu by the Lost 52 project in 2017, near where the S-28 had sunk. At Japan's surrender, 13 S-boats remained commissioned. All but USS S-15, SS-120, which was decommissioned in June 1946, were decommissioned by the end of November 1945.